But we're going to continue talking about creative, uh, kind of creative side of marketing with our next session. First, I'd love to introduce them before they come onto stage. Um, Chris Malawat is the Chief Digital Officer at Victoria Beckham Beauty. Uh, Brendan Rochelle is a VP at Clean Fresh Clean Threads. Say that three times fast. And we also have E. Ray from Attentive, who is going to come and lead the conversation with these two. So thank you so much for introducing them, for helping me welcome them to the stage. Good afternoon, Commerce Next, day one. I think that was the first time that I was introduced as E-Ray. Uh, but my name is Elizabeth Ray, folks do call me E-Ray, and I am the VP of Client Strategy at Attentive. What does that mean, what do I do? Uh, I have the privilege of working directly with leading brands like Victoria Beckham Beauty, like Fresh Clean Threads, on transforming their email and SMS programs through our powerful AI platform. Over the past eight years, we have collected two trillion, that's trillion with a T, data points to send and receive over 90 billion personalized messages across our global client base. Which brings me, and why we are here, to introduce two of the talented clients. Um, Chris Mollywatt, Brendan Rochelle, can you briefly introduce your roles and a bit about the brands that you represent? Brendan. Yeah, Brendan Rochelle, VP of Retention CX at Fresh Clean Threads. I oversee all customer touch points for our US and international storefronts. And I'm Chris Maliwat. I'm our Chief Digital Officer for Victoria Beckham Beauty. I oversee three areas, our performance marketing channels, um, all of our technology, consumer facing and backend systems, as well as our BI, or Business Intelligence Group. Tiny scope. <laughs> um, so let's jump right in. For marketers, much of the interest in AI today, 2024, is centered around its potential to enhance personalization. As an industry, we have talked about personalization for a very, very long time. I think we can agree that it's questionable if we have been consistently delivering, uh, but we are seeing that AI can change that. So Chris, I'm gonna start with you. What are you most excited when it comes to AI and personalization? Do you think this truly will be a win-win for both brands and consumers? Yeah, I, listen, I think that personalization and AI are at interesting points in their history where you know, 10 years ago, if you said personalization, it could mean 80 different things. And I think we found some of the use cases that make sense for marketers. AI, I think, is in a, in a similar place where you can say AI and mean a wide spectrum <laughs> of things. The connection for me with personalization, I think, is its ability, for AI's ability to help us with scale, like true one-to-one -one personalization at a scale that we wouldn't have been able to do without these models. Exactly, and Brendan? Yeah, I think it's 100% a win-win for both the customer and the brand. Um, what was like so exciting for us is we were using it for a use case of when customers are come to site and abandon. And so uh, you really have to meet the customer where they are. And while chat is great for capturing intent on site, um, SMS was that channel for us to continue that conversation long throughout the journey. And you real and without. AI, it's really hard to meet the customer where they are and at scale um, and really do so in both a hyper-personalized outbound message that feels relevant that will then provoke a response for the AI to kick in and continue that customer and understand their barriers and hopefully overcome them. Yep. So you're on your journey. Chris, you're relatively new. Yeah. Um, but one of the more common questions I hear from marketers is, in relation to AI is how do I get started? Where do I get started? Can you describe VBB's approach uh, as you start the exploration? Yeah, I think for us, AI certainly is in its infancy of how it applies to us. So we're being very um, exploratory throughout our entire um, marketing life cycle. I think many marketers will assume that you can go straight to using generative AI to put, put assets in the market. And we've taken a much more, uh, I don't know, holistic approach to really understanding what are all of the points in the marketing life cycle, including inspiration, discovery, 
um, how we really think about things defined like motivators and barriers, and really use AI um, throughout that. It's mostly behind the scenes for us now mm -hmm. and augmenting our teams and helping them sort through um, the vast universe of possibilities. But and we're just starting to dip our toe on the audience and segmentation side. I would suggest if any marketer is um, interested in experimenting, find the use cases and part of that entire life cycle that, that makes sense. I think it's quick to look in the press um, about stuff that goes directly to the consumer, but I think the vast majority of interest for me right now is all the stuff that happens before you even create um, consumer-facing stuff. Exactly. It's equally as valuable behind the scenes as it is consumer facing. And Brendan, you're a little bit farther along and, and a little lower funnel. Um, you were an early adopter of our AI tools, AI Pro and AI Journeys, uh, which automatically triggers really every aspect of a triggered message in real time. And that's everything from sequence to tone to copy, image usage to which emoji I, I will resonate best for each individual subscriber. Can you, you know, tell us a bit about the impact uh, of AI journeys at FCT? Yeah, definitely. Um, so like you already mentioned, we used it in both a welcome sequence for SMS as well as an abandoned cart sequence um, in order to understand just how the AI was going to resonate. Um, we wanted to put it to the most like clean cut incrementality test we could, which was we started with a, like a 90-10 holdout, so we were holding, so we we're actually holding out 90% of the audience to mitigate risk, um, and slowly increment, uh, building that up to where we were at a 50-50 uh, A/B test, just AI versus human static copy, um, and we were able to capture 50% more abandoned cart revenue through our SMS subscribers and 20% more welcome revenue, which um, just contributes to both. Um, substantial top line growth and, dra and drastically reduces our customer acquisition costs, just given for all that same ad spend of getting traffic to the site. We can if we can convert more, right, it um, really helps our, CAC to LTV, our LTV to CAC payback. So the metrics are great, but I'm sure there were some learnings and surprises along the way. Uh, can you describe some of those early learnings? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the, the, the first, so there were kind of like three learnings. Um, the first learning was, uh, when we initially kicked things off, we um, were finding that the AI was like replying um, to something that maybe didn't need a reply, right? Someone says like, thanks. Someone says like, will do. I think we um, quickly were able to tweak that and try to think about it more in terms of, hey, what does, let's actually reply to a barrier versus an acknowledgement. And um, so I think that was like one of the kind of like first interesting learning is just tweaking the model. I think like the second thing that we uh, really focus on is like how can we pass uh, attentive more of what we have learnings of what are some of our like highest LTV segments. These are like tags, right, um, customer attributes. And so this is to me where it got like pretty cool is we have where our brand ethos is fit for everybody. We sell women's different sizes tall. And so um, now when someone like could abandon a cart, we were able to get it to a point where it's actually gonna speak what scraping our website did and our product marketing different to like tall abandoners versus right smaller, smaller size abandoners. And um, so to me, that's where, to me like where like the bigger unlock came from. Great. Changing gears just a bit. Uh, with Jet AI, there is a fair amount to be skeptical about. It's new, it can't be unpredictable. Uh, and this, of course, can lead to concerns at the C suite and leadership level, certainly about privacy, data usage, uh, brand voice, brand tone. Um, Chris, representing leadership here today, what advice do you have to build that trust uh, and, and buy in? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, back to one of the earlier points we made. AI is really great at processing and helping you sift through and find insights and data. And for us, I think it was a pretty um, easy transition for us to get leadership to understand the value of AI by really leaning on um, our hypothesis that we need to become more and more data-driven, right? Whether it's quantitative or qualitative data, really taking in as many inputs that we can. And so it was a pretty easy lift for us to say, okay, <laughs> you can't just look at GA data or any other data without a way to process it 
as we get more and more data in our system. So using AI to really help us think through what all the data means and what actions we can take based on the insights we see mm -hmm. was really, I think, our in for the leadership team. I think AI as a concept feels so big and vast and difficult without grounding it in something that we're already doing. Um, so I think that was our in. Right, tying it back to something recognizable. Yeah. Absolutely. And then Brendan, you described a very seismic shift in you know, this campaign paradigm. It's not uh, as controlled. You're essentially ceding a lot of that to the technology, to the algorithms, to the data. Um, did you have reservations? I assume you did going in. And, and how did you overcome those? Yeah, um, I think I definitely had reservations. Um, I think the like um, the more like quantitative way to overcome it is just use a big holdout. Like you can start somewhere and kind of measure and go from there. I think the more like qualitative way was the same way you can kind of play around with ChatGPT. We were able to set up test accounts with the with the uh, AI, AI SMS tool and just put it through. Ask it the hard questions. Put it the questions that you right read read in your CX tool that you like dread and put it through like put it through that's like rough of a test as you can um, and ensure that like you feel comfortable with the outputs um, and so that's kind of how we over time built comfort and I think that once it's at once it was actually live and we had kind of our first data points it was a little bit easier to um, get comfortable and scale You'd anticipate that'd be risky. You're putting your C-suite in that seed list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, our founder, our founder was. He's. Uh, we, we we take a lot of pride in our brand voice. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's probably someone here in this audience who can share this story, but um, a pretty large retailer a CEO came over and said, "This is incredible. Who on the team wrote this?" Uh, and could quickly point to actually none of us. <laughs> this resonates with you because it's uh, it's taking all of what the brand attentive uh, knows about you. So that was a, a good testament. Um, and then, you know, kind of moving past this, so we've talked a bit uh, about where we are. Um, farther along in the exploration, specifically with email and SMS, uh, and and Chris a little bit earlier, but we are new, I think, in general to the application of this technology, of these tools. There's a lot to explore, a lot to learn, uh, and how it's going to influence uh, consumer marketing uh, and communication. So, can you talk to me about what's next on the horizon, what you're excited about exploring, uh, and I'll kick it off with Chris. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think. You know, Victoria Beckham beauty is all about modern luxury. And for us, our definition of modern luxury is really about convenience and anticipation. So we think technology's ability to understand people better than they are able to understand themselves sometimes is something that we're very excited to see apply to our world. I had previous roles at Netflix managing personalization, and I think our audience, our prospective buyers, they expect Netflix level personalization actually out in the world as they've gotten used to it over the decades. So how do you apply that level of thinking within your domain and within our domain is what I think I'm most excited about. We, um, I think it is harder to change the culture, I think, where we have been very much a like a broadcaster, right? We have an idea, we disseminate it to the crowd, and everyone gets the same message. To really start to have personalized messaging that anticipates customers' needs in our voice, and really starting real conversations and relationships with customers at scale, like, it just seems so exciting and not far away, but I think we can see the road ahead of us because of what we've seen in other domains like in mm -hmm. Netflix. Exactly. Netflix knows me better than I know me. Um, no, I'm excited that you tied it back to customer needs. That's exactly how we should be approaching it. Um, and then Brendan, what are, you, what are you excited about testing next? Yeah, um, I mean, we're definitely stoked about what we've done with um, AI SMS, but the unfortunate reality is that only a small fraction of your website visitors ever subscribe to SMS, um, and you need right opt-in to message them. And so in order to get kind of the bi a bigger lift, um, the next phase has to go into other channels. And so um, what this means for us is kind of AI, site AI personalization. If you think about like all those pop-ups and that you get on a site, right? Well, how can we personalize that at the user level leveraging AI? If you think about our chat um, and just various customer touch points outside of SMS, I think the SMS one is a nice, is a nice channel to follow a customer end to end, but I think the, uh, 
low, the lower opt-in per percent relative to other channels kind of caps a certain potential for until uh, we can roll out AI to a broader use case. Excited to see it. Yeah. Um, so this is Commerce Next. I have been instructed to leave you all with takeaways. Commerce Next Steps, I think they're called. Um, so number one, uh, AI drone personalization will certainly be a win-win for brands and consumers. I think we heard a few of those examples here today. Uh, advice is to think about where you've wanted to, perhaps surprise, delight, but really couldn't with human power alone. And think about what changes with the new capabilities and new tools. Number two, you know, just get started. Um, identify perhaps those sticky areas like brand tone, brand voice that you may need to avoid at the beginning. Um, and then find instead some of those quick wins. Uh, and finally, like Brendan shared, you know, start with a small test audience, learn, see what perhaps you did not anticipate where else it could be applied, and then build over time. So that's about it for today. Are there any other you know, parting words, final thoughts that either one of you wanted to share? Yeah, I think we talked about it a little bit. I think if you've got questions, if your management has questions about AI, really just get specific. Because I think the more specific that we can get about the use cases, about the benefits, I think the faster it is to actually bring people uh, to understand it. Yeah. yeah, and I think my biggest thing would be crawl first, then walk, then run with AI. <laughs> like a lot of people think of it as this switch that just flips and it's zero to 100, but that's like really not um, how, I, at least I would suggest going about it. Um, pick exactly as Chris said, a specific part of the funnel, a specific channel, marry those together with a certain percent hold out and kind of measure and go from there. And you can always expand into different um, customer communications later on. Exactly. Well, thank you very much, Brendan and Chris. Insightful, as always. If you have any questions, you can find Attentive at the booth downstairs. Uh, you can feel free to enter our AI waitlist, speak to our team, and get a customized Western-style hat. Um, it's very cute. Uh, so thank you again. Thank you, Commerce Next, and appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you.